We all know Mario Kart is in pole position when it comes to racing games on the Switch, but look beyond the Mushroom Kingdom and you'll find a plethora of great racers for petrol heads to enjoy. There are, however, also a lot of very, very bad ones that you'll definitely want to avoid. So hop in and let us take you for a spin through the best and worst racing games on the console. Crash Team Racing Nitro Fueled brought our favorite Bandicoot-based racer back to life on modern consoles recently, and it was fantastic to see this game given another chance and a beautiful visual makeover, as so many people still claim it to be the very best kart racer there is. With a weird cast of characters, some interesting power-ups, and a more skill-based nuance to proceedings, it's at least different enough from Mario Kart to set itself apart. It's definitely got a higher difficulty curve as it took me a decent amount of time for the racing to finally click, but eventually it was so satisfying to blast around corners and start winning races when I actually understood the boost system. While the game is stacked full of content and even received regular seasonal updates to add more, sadly microtransactions were patched in after release, so it can sometimes feel like a grind to actually unlock items, and you'll also have to wait until something you want is in the rotating stock of the shop. Still, this is a fantastic remake of a great game and brings Crash roaring into the modern day with a beautiful racing game that feels like it rewards skill over luck just a touch more than our favourite plumber. Hello Kitty Cruisers is a Mario Kart wannabe whose only positive similarity is that it's on the same console. It may be a colourful jaunt into the world of Hello Kitty and friends, but this masks the game's various issues. Hello Kitty Cruisers seems to run in slow motion it's like the idea of this game was to adjust you into a fluffy authoritarian society of three mile an hour speed limits. The average human could probably finish the game in a few sittings, of which most of that time will be spent yawning. I imagine taping the Joy-Con down and getting on with your day only to return before the race has finished a worthwhile strategy. This cat definitely hasn't got the cream. In the late 2000s, it seemed like everyone was jumping on the open world bandwagon in an attempt to ape the success of the behemoth that was Grand Theft Auto, much to the detriment of the games themselves. But one series that benefited from breaking free of its constraints was Burnout, with the seventh game Paradise allowing players to cruise around a vast playground to tackle races and stunt runs at their leisure. Although it's been on every Xbox and PlayStation home console since its release, the game has never graced a Nintendo system, but 12 years later, it's finally come to Switch. The core mechanic, driving dangerously to build up your boost meter, is still as exhilarating and ingenious as it ever was, but rather than being tied to a track this time around, players must tear through the city to get from point A to B, making each race a tense heart-pounding thrill ride where you never know what's going to be around the next corner. Reacting to oncoming traffic and obstacles becomes a little tricky when you're playing undocked, as there's so much happening on screen, the resolution can get a little bit bumpy. But thankfully, the frame rate still manages to run at a solid 60 frames per second to keep up with the breakneck speed. Squeezing such a huge game and all its DLC onto the Switch was always going to be a monumental task, and there have been some concessions. But developers Stella have pulled off an incredible feat to give us burnout on the go, making this one racer you'll definitely want in your collection. It's easy to see what Monster Jam Steel Titans was going for. It's supposed to provide the violent thrill of the Monster Truck Arena, alongside the timeless competitive fun of a racing game. What we end up with is a watered-down version of that vision. It's a $30 game from a subsidiary of big-name publisher THQ Nordic, but it plays like a $15 indie game. If you've never been to a real-life Monster Jam, well, first of all, it's dangerously loud, and second of all, it's non-stop thrills and fanfare. But that's not the experience you'll get in this game. Your gigantic monster truck feels unnervingly weightless as it jumps over copy-pasted ramps, flips out of corners, and whips itself upright after a wipeout. Obstacles feel like they're kind of made out of styrofoam. In short, the physics work, but it just doesn't feel right. 
The good news is all the while you can play as fan favorite monster jam trucks like Grave Digger and watch them get increasingly busted up, even losing tires. Instead of deafening engines, you'll be kicking back to a crunchy rock soundtrack. Developer Rainbow Studios seems to have specialized in action games and have them down to a science, so much so that the game feels like a hollow shell of its subject matter. Whenever anybody asks anyone to name something good about Star Wars Episode I The Phantom Menace, you'll usually hear the same few answers. Darth Maul, Ewan McGregor, and finally, pod racing. Star Wars Episode I Racer actually released before the film. LucasArts clearly already aware of the impact the high octane sport would have on audiences. It's all the more fortunate that what was released back then on the N64 and subsequently released in June this year on the Switch lived up to its big screen counterpart, delivering recognisable characters, faithful level design, and most importantly, lightning fast gameplay. Customization options allowed for you to spend your hard won credits on new parts for your pods from Watto's store, or you could buy discount parts from the junkyard and get your pit droids to fix them up. Again, a reference back to the mischievous tin can chappies found in the film. The Switch version comes with a few improvements, including a cleaner visual presentation and a 60fps performance making this the smoothest pod racing experience ever. There are multiple controller options, including a motion control option if your reflexes are genuinely Jedi-like. But for the most part, this is a direct port of the original, so don't expect remaster levels of modernization. However, if you loved it back then, you'll love it now, because this is pod racing. Three, two, one, go! There are several reasons why Wild Tracks Racing should have remained on the starting grid. When I first saw the game, I had high hopes of it being the Nintendo Switch's answer to Excite Truck on the Wii, but unfortunately, my hopes were dashed across the windscreen. Visually, the game manages to convey a sense of speed in some overwhelmingly brown environments, but the tracks are wide enough to not require any use of racing lines, and dodgy collision detection means that a tree or a rock may not always be as solid as they look. There are just three tracks and four playable cars, hardly captivating numbers. Even the narrator isn't that interested. His delivery of Checkpoint suggests he'd rather be proofreading the in-game text than watching the race. Checkpoint. And maybe he should have proofread the text. One track is called Dinosaur Canyon on the options menu, but once the race begins, Dinosaur Cannon appears proudly on screen. Wild Tracks is not roadworthy, I'm afraid. This is a definite MOT failure. Game over. Anyone with a fondness of mini racers like Micro Machines might think that tiny racers would be a fun way to spend a few hours. But they'd be wrong. Because to put it simply, this is one of the worst games on the Switch. And you can tell that just by looking at it. To call it a bare-bones racer would be generous, because there's virtually nothing that distinguishes it from any other title. First off, you choose a vehicle to drive, from a police car to a bus, which in itself is pointless because all of them handle the same, before you get to trundle around bland tracks for three laps. And then, well, that's it, that's the game. No clever new twist on the genre, no exciting additions to races to make them more of a challenge, just an endless cycle of vanilla driving across three cliched modes – arcade, time trial, and tournament. There is of course multiplayer if you want to drag along someone else to share in your misery, but no online mode, because why would you want to play this any more than you have to? Sure, the game may be for kids with its cartoony aesthetic and floaty physics, but with so many good races out there, please, I beg of you, don't even think about getting behind the wheel of this car crash. So that's it. That's the best and worst races you can play on the Switch. 
what did you think of our list and are there any ones we've overlooked? Let us know in the comments below and don't forget if you want more Switch player goodness, you can support us on Patreon for a copy of the magazine for only $4 a month. Thanks for watching.